here's a great um, um, test of, of, of writing something or anything for any writer. And, and it's, it's a simple one. So I have a little bit of a, a writing challenge we can try, and I'm hoping you can um, help me to make this small bit of information better. I'm going to read it to you. So my story is about a young writer trying to break through, whatever breakthrough means. Um, we'll call him Joe. And he's a good guy from a small town. His parents were hippie artists, not a lot of money, but they supported his move to Los Angeles. And so while writing during the day and very tired at night from these humbling like grunt jobs, um, Joe meets someone who decides to take him under his wing. And it's a producer who says, you know what, I like your work. It needs some polish, but I'm going to help you. And so the young writer, uh, Joe, is just like, wow, this is my dream come true. I call my parents and they say, we're so proud of you. We always knew you'd succeed. And then after about a year, reality sets in for Joe. And Joe starts to see that he's being used and sometimes abused. And this producer not only steals Joe's ideas, but he has Joe do a lot of his personal dirty work, like uh, go spy on his tenants, go spy on his wife, um, and also pick up his dry cleaning. Um, and then he, he has him write uh, scathing reviews on a former nemesis, and he takes those reviews and he uses them as an, his own because he used to be in the literary world. So he has Joe you know, review some of this other person's work and then writes these, these reviews, and then he publishes them as his own. So how could we clean this up? This is about like a story of a young writer who's, who's really hungry to be in the business, but he starts to see, wait a minute, I'm in a bad element right here. I'm in a bad way. For those of you who have worked in the agency world, this is the story of an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is that the log line? That's the log line. No, it is. That's oh. what it is. Okay. It's the story of an assistant. And it's the tame version. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So mine's for all audiences. Okay, great. <laughs> no, it's true, actually. Um, um, you know, actually, some you know, you, you know, some insistence would be like, oh no, it's, it's much worse than that. Um, but um, yeah, no. So what's the why, what's the purpose of this? The purpose is to show a good guy with a good heart, whose parents believed in him, comes here and finds that his goodness is taken advantage of. Okay, and, and, and my reflection on this is... How can I clean it up to tell the story better? Because it's not oh. just the idea, but it's, it's well, how I'm telling it. Well, it's, it, first of all, you have to shorten, it, shorten how you say it. Um, you, have to, you have to turn it into a, a concise bit of wording. Um, it has to become a log line or a premise. It has to be um, something that you can issue briefly um, that um, has a bit of a snap to it, a bit of a, a hook, uh, something that pulls you in. So um, that is number one. And so not to say that it doesn't have it, but you have to, you have to find it in there. You know, a story is um, is sometimes like um, like a block of marble, and 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 you're the sculptor, and you have to you have to find the form in the marble. What you have right now is marble, and you need to find the form. Um, um, Michelangelo used to say. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Italy, but it's one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen is the David. Um, but um, Michelangelo used to say that he would look at the, um, the block of marble and that he could see inside of it the form. And, and it's proven that he, he did because um, at the Academia where the, um, where the, um, the David sits, it's flanked on um, both sides by, um, by his sculptures known as the slaves. And the slaves were unfinished because um, 
I think it, it, he, it was towards the towards the end of his life. So um, Michelangelo basically um, chiseled straight into the marble towards the form. He didn't like like other other sculptors whittle all the way around the marble form to get to the form. He went right to it. So it'd be an arm sticking out of the block. There'd be a leg partially in the block and the rest would be all just raw marble. So that's what you got there is a bunch of raw marble. Um, and um, you have to get to um, the form that's inside. And the form would be your the germ, the absolute germ of your story, the, uh, um, the log line. Okay, so maybe the log line, it's, it's too long, but it could be a premise. You know, it, it could be, um, so the log line it would just be one sentence, correct? Yeah, technically mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's one sentence sure. or so, it, one or two sentences. Okay, so then Joe, young writer, finds out that goodness isn't always rewarded in entertainment. That's a little broad. Um, it, it's, it's, it's um, um, Joe, um, a young writer uh, is enthralled by a mentor in the Hollywood industry. Um, and moves to Los Angeles to find um, success and instead becomes um, an, an, an enslaved um, to a powerful man. That's more along the lines of, of, of what you're looking for. I, I, I tweak it a little bit more, make it a little bit little better around there but yeah that's what you'd be looking for okay and 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 joe who would he have as sort of his supporting character so we have this producer who's like the nemesis in some ways and then would he have a roommate how can we make joe his dialogue with someone to actually tell them about what's happening who would joe be bouncing ideas off of in this story i don't know you, you, you're telling me the story, so who do you think Joe would be bouncing the ideas off of? It sounds like you think there would be a roommate. Or, well, or there well, could be a coffee girl. Oh, sorry. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, there could be a coffee girl. Um, uh, you know, uh, Joe could, could be going through a lot of things. I mean, the question is, who is Joe? Uh, who is Joe? You know, why is Joe? You know, mm, I like you that. know um, what, what is Joe? what 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 really motivates joe you know that all tells you a lot of things as well you know it, um you know that you don't you don't need to have um attendant cliches um to to make any kind of story um in fact avoiding them um informs who the, informs a very sort of often uh, often a unique way of subverting them. Um, avoiding them um, allows you to go down an idiosyncratic road where you start to come up with some really original stuff. You know, um, so you you know sometimes you want to get around that. It's like, what if, what, 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 uh, why is it, why is it a coffee girl? You know, what if he's gay? That's true. Coffee boy. You know, what if it's a, yeah, yeah. what if it's a coffee, a coffee boy? Um, uh, you know, um, you know, roommate, roommate, what, well, why is he, what if he lives, you know, what if he lives with the, with the, with the producer? What if he, you know, lives in the producer's um, garage? He makes him live in the garage. You know, um, what if he sleeps in his car? What if he sleeps in his car? Now, now something's visually, now I'm starting to think. What if he sleeps in his car? You know, um, lots, of, lots of young people come out 
to places and you know they're 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 poor and they yeah. you know and and they have to they have to sleep in their car. That's something I read about. That's something I hear about on NPR. <laughs> you know, um, or a crummy weekly hotel. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. There's there, there's all these other things, you, roads you can go down to to avoid those tropes. Um, and 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 it's good that you do because you're going to get a more original piece of work out of it. Okay, so I see. Yeah, so the cliche young writer with the the um, proud parents back home that maybe that that's that's boring. Okay, so then what if we talked about what if the dad had a gambling addiction and he gambled away his college tuition and so he wasn't able to get a creative writing degree so he comes here to LA and it's not a coffee girl what if it's someone who does drag at night at a club okay and basically tells them the real deal and has no will just tell them how it is and he he trusts that person because they don't want anything from him okay so then um he basically said you know the the let's say the drag is Terry by night and then Terrence by day, and then so 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 make it interesting, like just not the typical. That's beginning to be something <laughs> I want to see or read. Okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? Right. You're, you're doing it. You're you're doing it right now. You're going down those off roads, and it's starting to make me curious to the point where like, oh, that's something I haven't seen before. I'm interested in seeing or reading it. Here's a here's a great um, um, test of, of of writing something or anything for any writer, and, and it's it's a simple one. It's like write what you want to see, <laughs> you know. Write the thing that you've never seen before that you're like, oh, I really like to see someone make a movie about that. What what an idea, <laughs> you know. What a, you know? What a novel idea! I'll write the thing that's never been done that I always wanted to see done. So then I have to ask, what happens to Joe, and how does he ultimately reconcile with that job or leave it? And and then I have to plan out: Does he quit? Does he get fired? Does something happen to the producer? Does the producer get arrested because maybe the producer had um, a shady business on the side that no one knew about? Maybe he was involved in auto. Uh, he, he was part of an, a ring of uh, automobile scams. Mm-hmm. So he was in on it with doctors, lawyers, you know, workers' comp, all this stuff. So he's in on this, and that's how he was really making his money, mm-hmm. and that's how he's funding the movies. Mm-hmm. And then he gets arrested, and there's a padlock on the house and the garage, and Joe's stuff is inside. He's got to get it out. So the sheriff has to come and let him in. And then he goes back home. Well, yeah, you could do that. You <laughs> okay. could do that. Okay. You could do that. As long as it's organic, mm-hmm. as long as you feel that it's organic, and what you're telling me sounds fairly organic, but... Um, if it's not organic, if anything happens that does not seem organic to you as the writer, um, you should run from screaming. <laughs> you know, you know, run, just run, screaming from anything that doesn't feel um, organic and natural to the characters. And this is something we haven't talked about: is character is that your character and what you've done is you built up a character uh, character profile more so than a log line or a premise and um, and through that character profile you have you have um, <clears throat> you have um, used that as a template to draw out what potential actions would occur given that situation so um, so now we since we know who Joe's character is, you know, um, we we get a sense of how that will play out. Character is a very, very funny thing. 
It's very, very funny. Um, the reason why it's funny is because it's prescient. It's 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 a um, it's a it's a it's a cute little tool because it it strings you along with like oh this is the you know like you know it's not going to go where you think it is but in a way it always will <laughs> so it's a, it's this little trick it's like it's like it like gives you enough breadcrumbs to go okay it's going to go exactly where you think it is you know but it you know it's going to look like it doesn't you know and that's what you do with character um you um you 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 set you set up um the reader or the audience um based upon the person's behavior um this also works in tandem with um with telling your story in the cut and uh, and loading up your exposition in um in between those cuts because if you if 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 you show the behavior of your character for example and um you'll see this and stuff like Lonergan does this did this in, in Manchester by the sea it's like uh if, if you, you know i go into a bar and um and i get into a brawl you know every time i'm going to go into a bar in this movie you don't even have to see me in the bar you know um you know there's going to be a brawl happening you know so <clears throat> so so that that's the sort of thing um that you can do with character that is um that is really really fun um and is really really rich um um yeah yeah that's basically that i feel like my character joe is too much he's too much of a good guy like he needs some kind of quirk or idiosyncrasy he's too like he's surrounded by interesting characters but why would he stay in that situation i feel like he's too flat so i feel like i don't know who joe is i guess He's okay. just like this guy that's surrounded by all these interesting people. Okay, who is Joe then? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So, <laughs> so Joe maybe okay, his dad had this gambling addiction. He found out that his college education was gone. So Well, if if his dad had a, a gambling addiction, mm -hmm. you know, well he has to he has to have some, you know, some serious resentments, you know, about that. you sure. know and, and and those resentments probably manifest themselves in some kind of problem of zone um 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 addicts have a tendency to to, be, to beget addicts um and certainly have a tendency to beget addicts in 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 the terms of um storytelling so um you know that's a very easy one to target you can there's a ton of things you can choose from other um psychological issues um it could be it could be alcohol he could be a cutter he could be it could be numerous things that you can use as um as tools you know right so joe's not just going to come out of the womb perfect then from from well, he being around that you no he wouldn't no he wouldn't come out of that perfect cuz he's you know he's going to he's going to be resentful of his dad sure you know um there there's you know there there was um that dysfunction in his family is going to be manifest in him even if it is in uh, even if it appears to be um positive on the surface um that uh, that's always fun to do is to do that little ironic thing with a character where the um where the um the negative aspect of that character looks like it's positive at first but it's actually when taken to an extreme it's negative would you mind giving me an example Harrison Ford Mosquito Coast You so know, it looks as a positive his character. where he, he he's a he's a good fought protective father but instead he takes his his family to some like remote location and like puts them through hell okay <clears throat> you know? i see i see um mm -hmm. this you know you there is there's you can take things that are good and you can make them at their at an extreme bad um at any time 
okay, so then maybe the movie opens with he and his dad um, betting on football games and it's a father-son bonding and you think, wow, they have such a great relationship. But then you realize that some serious issues are happening. He's owed money. The, you know, he has a bookie that he owes money to and it's just, it's getting out of control. But you don't see that at first. You just see this father and son watching these games and you think, wow, that's really neat. Like they have this close relationship. Yeah, yeah. And 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 to a certain extent, his father can be a good father. Sure. He could be a good father, but still be, you know, this kind of loser. You know? Um there's tons of there's tons of humans like that. Sure, male or female, yeah. yeah. And so then I'm trying to think though how Joe would be scarred from that, but um yeah, yeah. That, I think that's where my trouble lies with this character is Joe is too perfect, surrounded by some people that they're not damaged maybe, they're just very interesting people, and I've got to make Joe not so one-dimensional. I think that's my problem, is that everyone else is more lively than the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. Or you can do some crazy stuff. <laughs> Let's hear it. Well, I mean, like, um, what I mean by that is is that um, there, there there's 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 other areas that you can go um, you can go you can go down the line like you're suggesting or you can start to get meta with your character um, you can um, you can you can trade off your character with other characters in your story you can you can make it appear to be about Joe and then it actually starts to turn to be about somebody else in the story. Um, so, sometimes, sometimes, like um, the Coen brothers will give equal parody to some characters, and you'll go like, "I thought the story was about this guy, and why is it now about this guy?" And 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 and, and, and that's because they're adept at pulling that off. You know, not every, I wouldn't suggest that a new writer should should go out there out the gate and, and try things like that, but. That you can do stuff like that. Um, it's you know the the don't you know you sh if you are if you are writing and you're having fun and you're in the zone so to speak, um, you shouldn't you shouldn't be limiting yourself um, on ways that you can tell the story if the story wants to go there if it's organic. Um, if the story doesn't want to go there, then you don't go there. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I think I really need to rework this character because it's not, I'm not clear on who he is. I feel like I'm clear on some of the people around him. And he's not damaged enough or fully formed. So, you, well, well, you know, what would you do in this case? So once again, have you written a screenplay before? I have not, no. Okay, so, so how would you approach writing this? Well, I think I would try to outline it. So okay. I would maybe do, um, I know what's been popular is this 24, I think it was Adam Skelter talked okay. about, he had a teacher that did the 24 plot points or whatever, mm -hmm. 24, 24 beats or whatever. Um, Which is the same as 12. But. It's 12, okay. All right. It's just doubled, yeah. Uh -huh. but, but And so I'm going to have the opening um, of maybe on the couch. And so, all right, we've we got the you know the popcorn and all the stuff for the game or whatever. Maybe maybe they're drinking together. Um, Joe, Joe's over 21. Um, and uh, it looks like they have this great moment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from there, from that number one opening, and start... Um, and then we're going to see some stuff unravel at home, maybe some yelling with the mom. Um, and then, you know, the, the hard discussion about, I'm sorry, um, you're not going to be able to get to. Yeah, but whatever. after you're done with all that, mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, and you get all those, those points in there, um, you're going you're gonna to write it, right? Sure, in, in screenplay format. Yeah. Okay. So I may have screenwriting software. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. And then when you're when you're done writing it, you're going to have hopefully something that's going to be around like eighty to one hundred and twenty pages, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
then then once you have that 80 to 120 pages, the whole world changes. And I don't mean just like, I don't mean like, you know, necessarily the world of script. I mean your world. Um, because you are going to come and look at that script with new eyes. And, um, and, and, and the new eyes that you bring to that script is going to, um, is, is, is going to have a profound effect on, on your protagonist and that main character. None of every, anything that you, um, that you come out with as, a, um, as an idea for like an outline um, or a thought like that is going to is going to magically crystallize into the exact thing that you want. Um, what happens, at least to me, um, 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 quite often is that um, I'll start off with a vision of what I'm going for, and then along the way that vision changes, and then towards the end it really starts to really dovetail towards the vision, the original vision, but not how I have expected, never how I expected. It dovetails towards the original vision, but never down the road I expected to get. That's when I know that it's organic because I will sit there and I'll go like, you know what? This is what I want to do. You, this is what new writers have to learn how to do. Um, to make the Sophie's choice between what you want to do and what's best to do for your script. You know, you might sit there and go like, you know what, I really want to do this because this is how I thought of it. No, no, that's not best to do for your script. What's best to do for your script is this over here because it's where your characters want to go. It's where your story wants to go. So you need to go in that direction. And you keep going into that direction until it all falls into place. That's the way it works. It doesn't work any other way, you know. Um, and I would defy any any um, successful writer to um, to um, to say to say anything otherwise about that experience. Um, it happens like that. It's like you're like, wow, it all worked out in the end, <laughs> you know. Um, but never to a T what you have going on up here <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so I won't really know what I'm working with until I take those 24 points and then I put them in screenplay format, write anything from 80 to 110 pages or thereabouts, and then maybe wait on it a week or so. And then I really am working with the beginning of the marble. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, 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 Ernest Hemingway had a famous phrase, um, and um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use the um, the um, the sanitary version. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, every first draft is crap? Okay. 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 Or poop. Okay. Right, yeah. We'll, we'll keep it, yeah. <laughs> Every uh -huh. first draft is poop. Okay, good. Okay. And that, that is a perennial. It'll never go away. <laughs> for, 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 for time and memoriam, for everybody. You know. Right. Every first draft is poop. Okay. Even if you think it, you're like, oh, this is great. No, it's poop. <laughs> you know, you're going to come back and you're going you're gonna to look at it and it's going to come together. The other thing about that is, and this is this is this is something every writer should know. Really, at the end of the day, um, with with my familiarity with the process and with all the writers that I've known on so many levels, um, successful, otherwise, and everything, there is no such thing as a finished screenplay. 
that medium never is complete. You may think it's complete. It's never complete. A screenplay is finished when the director calls action. That's when it's finished. There's no, there's no designated finish to a screenplay. And if a writer ever takes that for granted, it's, they're, they're not doing their job. Writers should always be ready to come up to bat and say, I can make it better. Or I can, I can do this. I can like communicate this better. I can do th-. if you're if you, 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 at the if you're like on set and the uh, and, and and the director is um, is shooting the film and you, and he says you know what tomorrow I'm about to shoot these like five pages I I I'm not feeling it and the producer's not feeling it can you go back and rewrite them you're gonna go back and rewrite them. You're not going to say, I'm done. <laughs> okay. You're not going to go, oh, no, it's finished. It's, it, you know, David Fincher, it's finished. <laughs> it's finished, David Fincher. <laughs> I mean, no, that's, all you, that's all you get out of me. You're not going to do that. You're going you're gonna to go, you're going to go home that night and you're going to rewrite those five pages for David Fincher and you're going to bring them the next day. And that's how it's going to go down. So, yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as a finished screenplay. Okay. And so is it, is it when the director calls cut or is it when he calls action or she calls action? It's when, it's when um, he or she calls it action. Action, you know? okay. It's like um, because they're shooting it. Um, I mean, for hopefully they don't rewrite your your movie in post. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes they do. <laughs>